Hello everyone. Happy New Year. We are uh, in the month of January and I have started a round of HCG. I am very familiar with this protocol and have uh, had many, many successful rounds and helped many people and been helped by many people by blogging. And so I feel like in order to be held accountable, it is probably the best way for me to check in each day and let you know what I'm up to. And uh, I will also be posting on Instagram. On Instagram, I'm at HCG Rebel. And uh, here on uh, HCG Meant to Be, that is a channel that I started in 20, 2012 or 2013 and just have never converted over. And so that's why you see two different names. Um, this is my 2020 calendar, and it not everybody needs to do a calendar like this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I have it set up. Um, here, I am going to be doing multiple rounds back to back, and so this is called cycling. And what I do when I start out is... I plan my rounds moving these paper strips around in the month to see what works best for me and um, to identify where I'm loading, where I'm in P3, and where I'm transitioning. And so um, what, what you see here is Tom, which I just finished up time of the month, and that's why I delayed in starting my round. Uh, as we came into the new year, it, for me, I have my most successful rounds when I start after I have finished um, my period. And so I finished my period on Tuesday. I loaded on Wednesday, Thursday. Today is Friday. So this is load days, 48 hours. And then I am doing a 40-day round. And so this is the entire month of January. And then we move into February. And then I have two transition days. And so on your day 40, you take your, I do sublingual drops, you take your drops in the morning. And then you go a full 72 hours still on P2 protocol. But these two days you don't take your drops. And then you start P3. So this is P3 as I finish February, roll into March. And then I'm cycling. So I will be doing two full days of load. I am reloading. And then I start P2 again through March into April. I transition here two days. And then I am on P3. I'm doing 14 days of P3, which is very aggressive um, and not for everybody. And that could change. If I can't get a grip on stabilizing my weight, I will adjust it then and I'll rotate and, and may even eliminate this round. It just depends. So here's two more load days. And then I'm going to do a 25 day round depending on how things go. I'm going to just calculate that in there and then have two transition days. And then I'm going to be done by June 1st. And then I'm not going to schedule anything for the latter half of the year. I'm just going to wait and see how things go. And um, again, this is more or less not something everyone needs to do. It's just a visual for me, and it really helps to see uh, where I'm at and where I will be on a specific date in a specific month. And other than that, I don't really look at this calendar again. And then on this page, what I do is I write out in that time frame that I intend to be on protocol the obstacles that I'm going to face. And it's really good to have it on paper so that you have a plan and acknowledge when you're going to need to pack food. So my first month is the roughest month. I have um, something that I'm doing this weekend uh, with my family and I have an anniversary. I have a food trade that I'm involved in and help uh, run. And I'll get into that one on more detail next weekend when we get closer to it. I have my youngest daughter's birthday party, which I'm cooking for. And then I have to consider that I will more than likely have two different menstrual um, 
cycles in this month. I'm running at about 23, 24 days right now. And um, that that is something that you have to acknowledge. And then the rest of the the rounds that I all I face are holidays, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, um, Mother's Day, which will probably be one of my harder ones. I can get by on these other ones, um, my middle daughter's birthday. And then come June, I will be going on, my youngest is graduating, and then we will be holding a vacation. And so I have no intention of being on um, P2 during this time. I'll be in a P3 phase and more than likely doing intermittent fasting in June. Okay, this is a complete chart of my round. And um, this is something that I've made available to clients and, and friends in the past. And so what it does is it shows your phase one and phase two um, and you fill in the blanks. And so I'm a very visual person, as I said, um, I don't know how many rounds I've done. I've done a lot of rounds. And so that's why there's a question mark there. But for those of you that are in your first or second, third rounds, whatever it is, um, it's good to document it and keep track of it. Um, here is a LDW, if that's applicable, which means last dosage weight, or if you are injecting, it would be LIW. And so what that is, is from a previous round, you want to document where you left off and how far away you are from that, because it, um, again, it's important not to get too far away from that LDW at all times. And that's right here, how I got into trouble. So my preload weight is 181.8. That's the most I've ever weighed in my life. Um, no judgment here. We're just um, getting started where we are and not hiding from the truth and writing it down and, and doing the best that we can to get past that. So I had a clean load. So I have an, a loss of 0 0.8 and I am now at 181 this morning on my first day of P2. Um, time of the month or Tom. I've already had uh, my period this month and again I will probably have another one before the month ends. Last dosage weight would be what you record here on day 40. When you get to the um, the end of your round that weight is how you keep track of where you're supposed to be when you go into P3. And so this one up here is from previous rounds, but this one here is in relation to this particular round. So on day 40, you fill in your weight on that particular day. Even if you continue to lose weight in those transition days, the LDW is the weight that you're paying attention to. Um, and then this talks about transition because a lot of people get confused in transition of um, when you take your last drops and continuing uh, P2 even though you're no longer on those, those, uh, on HCG itself. And then when phase three begins. And so when you get up here, you'll see the dates, um, where I started out again, this is redundant, but the more you write it, the more it sinks in your brain. So that was my weight. On my first loading day, my second loading day, I had a loss. And then my first day of VLCD1 in phase two, again, I had a loss. And so I'll calculate these days. This is just for quick reference, just to look at the bare facts. Um, and then if you wanted to go into more detail, that would be my monthly calendar. And then I, I what I do here is document by the day. And so we have Tom. Finish Tom, LD1, that means my loading day one, loading day two. And it, again, it's the same thing. These are my my weights. So first thing you do when you wake up, you go to the bathroom, strip your clothes down, step on the scale. Uh, this is to make sure I've taken my HCG. So three times a day, I usually take it at exactly the same time each day so I don't forget. And then uh, bowel movements. This may be TMI for some of you, but the reality is you need to keep track of your bowel movements because if you get too far apart, you need to correct it. And sometimes it's hard to remember 
you get um, foggy at times or the days just merge together and you can't remember. So I never go more than two or three days without correction in that area. Um, so here is uh, phase two, day one. And that runs through the entire month of January. And then as we roll into February, you'll see that this is pink, and that's because this is day 40. And I'm going to enter my LDW on this day. And I'm going to transition for two days. And these days, this weight doesn't matter. And I'll do more uh, another vlog in relation to that later when we get closer to that. Um, but this is the date that you want to keep track of as you head into P3. And so that is the monthly calendar. And then I even go beyond that sometimes if it's a struggle and I break it down by the week. And in breaking it down by the week, it's sometimes you just want to not have your whole calendar out. Um, again, this is just something that I have made up and um, shared with my uh, clients, friends, and family. And so what you're going to see here is uh, documentation of the week that you're in. And because I started in the middle of the week, that's where, where I'm at. And so um, I write my weight in. I write whether it was a loss or a gain. Uh, I document my HCG drops. I document my water just to try and keep track of whether or not my water intake is sufficient. Um, I document bowel movements and and then I also try to like write a general plan out this isn't a, a menu plan or anything I it could be used for that but I usually just try and write something down to keep myself focused on what's going on in that day so you'll see two days ago I wrote load clean and smart meaning you know you're doing this for a reason and uh, it's, it was very important to me to have a clean load and not gain a bunch of weight so that meant for me no junk food no sugar no carbs and no alcohol now granted I did ingest sugar um, a little bit of sugar and a little bit of carbs but I, I'm talking about excess here excessive amounts um, I do minimal fluids in my loads because I struggle with keeping, I end up getting nauseous if I have too much water. And so I make sure on the days previous to loading, I'm sufficiently hydrated. And then I have minimal fluid and then I rehydrate as soon as I start P2. Um, set timers means just to make sure I get back in the flow of um, eating uh, to, to capacity when you're loading, it's really important because you don't feel hungry, you don't think about it. But what I did was I set timers throughout the day to remember to take my HCG and to eat and eat and eat and snack. Um, and so then I was rewarded with a 0.4 loss, even though I had a pita pizza on this evening. Um, and again, here it shows the same thing. You're familiar with all this. And then I wrote to push food early because as the day goes on, uh, it gets harder to eat. And then my mantra and my main goal yesterday was not to get sick. And throughout the day, I thought of all the different words that I was feeling as the day progressed and I didn't want to eat anymore. Um, I was struggling, as you can see, those were, that was almost became a game of how many different words I could think of. Um, and then this is today. So today, again, I was rewarded with another point four. Um, I did find myself snacking on, I had took a couple bites of uh, bread in the evening when I was loading it before I even realized what I was doing. And so that right there shows um, habitual behavior. And I caught myself, but I had already taken like two or three bites of bread. And so I had to put that down. So other than that, I did really well. And I'll go into uh, what I loaded on in a different video. Um, so I've stayed busy all day. I haven't eaten yet. I think it's, what time is it? It's three o'clock, um, in the afternoon. And that just shows you that I loaded appropriately and I feel pretty good. I just had some tea and I'll probably have a little bit of bone broth, um, here pretty quick. And then I'll just do it at dinner tonight, depending on how I feel. I haven't decided yet. So I do intend to do a detox bath and that, uh, is 
something that I tend to start doing more and more in my round, not necessarily to lose weight, but just because it helps me sleep and I struggle to sleep on HCG and then early to bed because I am tired. Um, I don't have anything. I haven't really thought about tomorrow yet. And I know that Sunday I have to have a plan and pack food because we are going out of town. Um, and more than likely the rest of my family is going to be eating out. So I try to do a gratitude. I wish I could do a gratitude every day, but this is just to get in the flow. And so my gratitude for this week is for the knowledge and the tools, um, to gain health and lose weight. I'm very grateful that I have the ability and I know what to do. It's just a matter of using that knowledge and those tools. And that's what I'm doing right now. And then um, notes, meaning keep planning, shop, prepare all of the, my food and get rid of my junk foods. And so I'm not as prepared here and here as I'd like to be, um, but I feel pretty good about this and I'm just going to progress through the weekend taking care of this. Um, so then other than that, I am, I'll make another vlog that talks about my, my loading so that you have an idea of what that loading looks like. Um, here's just an example of some high fat foods that you can ingest while you're loading. And that's what helped me, uh, actually lose weight rather than gain weight. I've seen people gain up to 12 pounds in a load. And that weight comes off really quick, but that's still more weight than is necessary um, in, in a load. I feel like it's just, it's kind of a waste of time. Um, and so that would be a dirty load. I have done a dirty load. I've also thrown up and had trouble in a dirty load and had to load an, an additional day, a three-day load, um, because I couldn't keep my food down. And so this is just pretty much how I go about doing it. And again, like I said, I'll go into more detail in my next vlog. Okay, everyone. I uh, hope that helps looking at those calendars and gives you an idea of different ways you can keep track. Um, it is excessive. Not everybody needs to do it this way. Uh, you can keep it as basic as just something simple like this, or you can go into more detail if you're OCD like I am. All right. Take care. Ciao.